okay, Grandmama, you forget the snowing outside for a few minutes. <laughs> and <laughs> and talk it's snowing, y'all, we've probably already got an inch, and it's still snowing. It's supposed to snow until midnight, so, or maybe beyond. Uh, the other day, I made this pie, and it's called a Ladyfinger lady Crust Tropical Pie. And um, we told you on there that Roy would come on and give you the, uh, explain the GL load, the glycemic load carbs to y'all. And so uh, I'm fixing to turn the camera over. I mean, the, uh, I'm fixing to take the camera and turn it over to him and let him explain to you because I had a girl ask me today, she said, I don't understand that GL y'all talking about. So Roy is fixing, is about to uh, try to, to explain it to y'all. And so I'm gonna take the camera and I'm gonna let Kim come over. I told you that the carb load on a one piece of this pie uh, was between two and three, closer to two, but the, it's a low carb load. What does that mean? It won't spike your sugar. For the normal person, a piece of this, now if you'd have to pie, that's different, but a piece of this won't spike your sugar. And that's what we mean by low glycemic load. A serving of this will not spike your sugar. Now, but you say, I'm not a diabetic. That's right, I'm not either. Rose isn't either. We're not diabetics. But we went to this way of eating, the low glycemic way, because we had health problems. My blood pressure was high. Um, I was having inflammatory joint problems. Rose had gastric problems severely every day. And we needed to find a way to get better. It also causes high glycemic foods and insulin spiking causes problems with dementia, with your heart, your blood vessels. So there's a lot of reasons why you don't want to spike your insulin. And it's not just for diabetics, it was for us. And when we changed, we got over those problems. But the, the other factor is, uh, it takes a longer time to hurt you, but when your insulin spikes because you ate a high glycemic food or a sugar-filled piece of pie, just like this one, but sugar-filled, it spikes your sugar and it turns your fat factory on. What do I mean? I mean, your body has to be told to turn on full force fat making. Now, it'll make a little long, but the major reason that you generate, or you build most of your fat around your stomach and places you don't want it, is because your fat factor was turned on when your blood sugar spiked because you ate high glycemic foods. So we don't want to turn the fat factory on. We want to keep the fat factor turned off and keep our body, body eating carbs instead of storing carbs. So we'll have more videos on this now that we started teaching this. But right now, you just, uh, Follow along with me as we talk about the load in this particular pie. We're gonna show you how we calculate that. First, uh, I wanna show you a book, The Glycemic Load Counter, a pocket guide to glycemic load and glycemic index values for over 800 foods. Keep it right in the kitchen, open it up, there it is. You don't have to do any calculating, it tells you. Dr. Mabel Blades is the author and you can get this on Amazon. This one was a few dollars. It was used when I bought it, but let's open it up to apple. Uh, fresh apple right here. The carbs in it, now this is just carb count, is 10.5. The carb load, GL, is four. The glycemic, glycemic index is 38, and the calories is 48. All of that's right here in your book for you if you keep this on the counter. So, you see how the, the carbs that you count in the apple was 10.5. But when you do the calculation for the carb load, it drops it to four. So just like 
the wind affects the wind chill, takes the way you feel the cold from 30 degrees down to 18, takes it down. The same thing happens when you count the carbs in a food in 100 grams and then calculate the carb load, the way the body actually feels about it. So the body feels that the apple is only four carbs because that's the carb load. And how do you know? We'll teach you how to calculate it later. But right now, it's right in the book. You can also open up Google and say, what is the glycemic load of a fresh small apple or medium apple? And it'll tell you there too. So now uh, let's look at banana. Banana is a little high because it's got a lot of sugar, right? All right. The carbs in a banana, average banana, is 23.2 carbs. The glycemic index is 52, and the average banana's glycemic load carbs are 12. So anything below 10 is low glycemic load, and that's what we're trying to focus on today. So uh, 11 to 19 is uh, medium, and high is anything above 20 in the glycemic load scale right here. So eat your half a banana and be happy it won't spike your sugar and won't cause your fat factor to turn on. Okay, let me look at something else here right quick. Let me flip through a couple of um, pears. Pears aren't very high. 8.5 carbs in 100 grams of pears. The glycemic index is 45. It's medium. And the glycemic load is four carbs. That's what your think your body thinks you're eating. Yeah, I mean, that's canned and juice. I'm sorry. Okay. If we go well, canned and juice, yeah, but not right. as no sugar added. Right. Mm -hmm. And fresh are the same thing. Yeah. Four yeah. carbs, four GLs. Now, so that's a four four GL four glycemic load carbs. Okay, and that would qualify as low GL low carb load. And that's what you hear us talk about on the videos. Now, now you might not think you can eat much watermelon. The carb load, the carbs in watermelon, 7.3 in 100 grams, if you just scoop out 100 grams of watermelon. But the carb load is five. So actually, you can eat 200 grams of watermelon, which is about a full cup and you'd only have 10 carbs, which is still low carb load. This gives you a lot more flexibility in your eating selection. Uh, the carb load method does because it gives you more control over what you're trying to do. You have more knowledge about what it's gonna to do to your body than you do if you're just counting carbs. Now I'll show you a little different version just to give you a visual of it. This is, uh, Blueberry, the carb load is six in 100 grams. The glycemic load is half that, only three. So you can eat more of this than you would think you could. How about uh, pineapple? Because it's in this dish and the blueberry is too. Carb load, 12, no, the carbs in 100 grams is 12.5. Sounds like you, that's, that's medium load. But when you calculate or look up the glycemic carbs, it's only six in 100 grams. So you can eat that and not spike your blood sugar or turn on your fat factory. Now, carbs in strawberries, 100 grams. That's about a half a cup. If you want to just visualize the volume of fruits mostly, it'd be about a, half, a little more than a half a cup. So the glycemic load now on the strawberry for 100 grams, a half a cup is only two. So you can eat a bunch of strawberries. And that's what we have. Those are the three ingredients. We want to show you how we calculate that now. The way I did it, uh, I looked it up just like I saw that. So let's do a pineapple. 
the pineapple part. We put a cup of pineapple, PA, we'll just put it PA. We did a cup of pineapple and a half a cup is about five GL. So if we did a whole cup, that's 10. Glycemic load carbs from the pineapple that's going into this pie. Now we also put strawberries. Put a one by your cup. One? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay, now we did a cup of strawberries. cup of strawberries, all right, and 100, 100 grams is two. Well, 100 grams is about a half a cup. So we put four glycemic load carbs into this pie when we put that cup, one cup of strawberries. Now, we had blueberries in here. So we put a half a cup of blueberries. And a half a cup of blueberries has six carbs by count, but the GL calculation drives the effect of that down to three carbs. So the glycemic load carbs, the effect of those of the uh, blueberries is a carb load of three. Now then, she put some um, Splenda. She put three quarters of a cup. Three quarters of a cup of Splenda. A condensed milk. Now here we have a little bit of a conundrum, a problem. You can't look up Splenda condensed milk and learn what the carb load is because condensed milk by definition has sugar in it. Splenda milk, condensed milk does not have uh, sugar in it, so you can't get it that way. So what you can do, uh, this is unsugared, condensed milk. Evaporated milk is not quite as dense as this, but evaporated milk, you can look up uh, the carb load, and the carb load uh, for evaporated milk is six for 100 grams. Now, this is one third thicker, has one third more uh, of the solids of the milk in it than evaporated does. The condensed has more in it. So we can add about a third to the evaporated milk and it'll give you approximately what the uh, no sugar added condensed milk is. And that's six, but I'll do it this way. I'm just gonna put six to 10 and you can use whichever number you want to. I'm going to use the six. It really won't affect the final calculation, hardly any, as you will see in a second. So now, there were other ingredients, but they weren't carb. They weren't carb heavy contributing. So we've got the, the carbs here that went into the pie. It was a big pie. Now, so add them up, 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, and that looks like 23. 23 is the glycemic load carbs, the number. Twenty-three. Now that's in the total pie. Okay, we want to know about one piece. Well, how many pieces in this big pie were there? 
there were 10. So we take 10 pieces and divide it into 23 carbs in the total pie, 23 glycemic carbs, and you come out with 2.3 glycemic carbs, that's GL carbs, or that's the carb load, 2.2 glycemic load. It's low carb load. We're not saying when we're talking on our channel, low carb count, because the count is higher than the carb load, but the carb load is the true way your body is judging what you're eating. And why, when I say judging, your body is deciding to turn on your insulin or not, which turns on your fat factory also. So as long as you can stay low carb load, now this piece of pie is 2.3. Anything below 10 in the GL scale, now, if you'll get this little book, it explains what I just did. And it also gives you the loads, so you don't have to worry about it. But it gives you a lot more control over what you can eat and what you can't eat. If you want the scientific explanation behind it, Dr. Benjamin Bickman, a PhD, medical scientist at Brigham University, wrote this amazing book. It's simple enough for us all to understand. Sometimes I have to read it twice. But why we get sick, and the whole discussion is laboratory cause and effect lab results. Not somebody's opinion, not somebody trying to sell you a bottle of pills to solve your world, or a bottle of vitamins to solve your, all your problems. That ain't gonna do it. But he explains how high glycemic foods are driving the, uh, the diabetes pandemic that we're having around the world. And in America, it's as bad as it gets. And the young people at very young ages now are developing it because they're being fed high glycemic foods every day. And no, we didn't always feed high glycemic foods in the quantities. Now, because everything has sugar in it, see? And that's part of what's driving the problem. So when you, if you want to know the real science behind it, all I'm doing is repeating the science and the laboratory cause and effect uh, test that he has. And there's, there's about that many in the back of the book, just test after test after test. So this is really cause and effect. Now, here's another book you can get, but that was Dr. Benjamin Bickman, B-I-K-M-A-N-P-H-D. And you can also look him up on YouTube. He teaches what I'm teaching right now on YouTube. This is another book if you want to order a glycemic load diet. If you want to call it a diet, you can order this cookbook, Rob Thompson, M.D., and Dana Carpenter, a dietitian came together to give you these recipes and there's a lot of recipes in there. And yes, if you eliminate sugar and the high glycemic foods like potatoes and rice, you don't have to eliminate, you can eat anything you want. Just watch the amounts you eat. And that's why you can use the glycemic load to calculate the amount that you can eat without spiking your sugar or turning on your fat factory. And Rose and I don't want our fat factory turned back on since we got it turned off. God bless you. Thank you. I hope that helps you understand a little bit about using the glycemic load counter to manage your carb eating. So the next time you hear us say low glycemic load while we're cooking, you know we're talking about this calculation right here and the way you find out what that load is, you look it up. Now, I can teach you later how to actually calculate with a pencil, but I didn't figure you wanted to know that today. So, have a good day.